Okay, so welcome to Hinchinbrook. This is our tour. Just entering through one of the three entrances to the school. Uh, this is the one with the main gate that looks quite fancy, as you can see, Hinchinbrook School written there on the railings. Now, this will all be open when you come. So you don't have to worry about having a badge and beeping and stuff. Okay, so this is main reception. You won't spend a huge amount of time here. You really only come here if you need to sign out or sign in during the day. Uh, it's just sort of a location, um, but it is worth knowing so that if someone says, where's reception, here it is. So moving through here. On the right hand side, if I just stop a minute, on the right hand side here, this is all offices. So there's lots of offices here. So we have a Reaper graphics department, which is where they, we can send lots of big photocopying and things like that. Uh, and we also have uh, the principal's office in this building and other various offices. So again, you won't spend a huge amount of time in the offices. We pan over here. We've also got, this is the science block. So this is where science is. The science rooms have all got special sort of laboratories and stuff like that. So they're all sort of set out in slightly different ways from a normal classroom. Um, but you'll soon get the hang of that. Uh, and those room numbers, just for interest sake really, are somewhere between 80 and about 100. So if you can look on your timetable, that's the sort of numbers you'll see. So take a little trip here. It's quite breezy today, so you can probably hear the trees. We're quite fortunate, we've got quite a lot of nice trees and greenery in our school, which is good. So the first sort of signpost, which is quite helpful, is just here. So if you just pause a minute, you can have a look uh, and see that in most cases, everything's towards the right hand side. Uh, so you've got the food court, uh, which is obviously where you can buy some food. You've got lower school, which is where most of your forms will be based. You've got the performing arts center or what we usually call as the PAC and the sports facilities, which is obviously something that I'm sure many of you will be excited about. And you can just see on the top right, top left there rather, a little sign that says Hinchinbrook House. So our school is um, based over three different main areas of the school in terms of the upper school, the middle school, and then the lower school. Now you will have lessons in middle school and lower school. You probably won't have too many in upper school because that's the house. And that's usually just for sixth form lessons. Uh, hopefully you'll get an opportunity to visit though because it is an amazing building. I'll take you around there in a moment. I just want to pan round a minute. So you can see middle school, so that's middle school in front of us. And then those are the admin, the offices that I just mentioned. Now, if we just take a little trip over to the offices, down some steps. So in, in the lower sort of floor in this office, you might need to come in here sometimes. So in here we have Mrs. Benjafield, who is our attendance officer. And also, if there is anything that you need to um, pay money for, so that could be a replacement uh, planner, it could be trips or anything like that, something like that, then our cashier is also accessible through these doors. So those are the main reasons you might need to come in here is to pay for, for something, unless your parents do it online. And you can see the times that the uh, cashier is open. You just press a little button in there, and they'll come out and uh, ask you what you need to pay for, etc., etc. Right, so just pan around there, you can see the science block where we've just come from. We'll just take a little journey up through here towards a minibus. Obviously we've got some students in at the moment, we've got some six formers in today, uh, some year 12s. And we have year 10s in on a Wednesday, Thursday and a Friday at the moment. And we also have some key worker children in. So like you're in school, or a lot of you are in school, some of our children are in school too. So get a sort of nice view of the house from here and uh, the area in front of us that's got a well and is rather green is strangely enough known as well green uh, i don't know how they came up with that name there we are so if we make our way through here around well green mustn't ever stand on well green that's uh, very important I'm trying to keep the camera as uh, still as possible when anyone watching this and feeling a little bit queasy just turn a little bit now you can see where people coming from Brampton will enter so these are the gates the main school to well green gates if you like uh, most people from Brampton will probably cycle uh, and you will come in through those gates and what we ask is that you get off your bike as soon as you enter the school grounds as soon as you get to those gates you dismount and then you walk your bike all the way along here 
all the way down here and then just past that lovely tree there and past the well you see a massive tree in the background and that's where your bikes will be parked that's where your bike sheds are so that's if you're coming from Brampton or maybe if you're adventurous and you're biking from Buckton or even off although most of you will probably get a bus from those places so moving along here see various staff hello mr fordham we're from making our way through here and then on the this is we are going to enter this six form area as i say hopefully you'll certainly get a tour even if you don't get to have any lessons in here and then we can always look forward in five years time for when you're in the six form hopefully if we just pan around here the reason i've brought you here is because this is where the medical room is so nurse rita as you can see on the door there or on the side of the door um is our nurse and she's based here during the day and what we do is if you're feeling unwell which is completely obviously unfortunately people do become unwell at any point we just ask that if you're in a lesson that you ask the teacher to sign your planner and you'll carry a little planner around and uh that will be like your passport so if anyone then asks you um why are you out of lessons then you'll be able to show them that if you feel ill at, at lunch or break time obviously you can just bring yourself here um, or maybe come with a friend. It's always nice for a friend to accompany people to the medical room. Also along this area, which is called Nunnery Court, because this used to be a nunnery, uh, the house. Um, this is Nunnery Court, which sort of marks the edge. Uh, and this is sort of the courtyard, if you like. Um, and you can see the door that's just open over there, not the white one, but the, the nearer one made of wood. Uh, that takes you to our counsellor. So we've got a school counsellor, full-time school counsellor. We've also got, and her name is Miss Bradford, Mrs Bradford, and we've also got Mrs Setchfield who helps with welfare and things as well and sort of runs this area of the school. And so she's also a lady that's in here that will be more than happy to listen to you if you've got any kind of emotional concerns. All right? So we'll now make our way into middle school. We'll go through the middle of Well Green. I do feel quite lucky that I get to teach at this school um, just because it is quite a beautiful place really. We want to make sure that we're keeping it as beautiful as possible which is why we have so many bins around uh, at the moment because we've got fewer children in school. Obviously I think it does it does look particularly beautiful. Uh, if we can try and keep that the way it is during uh, your time at school that would be amazing. We do have or litter picking sessions and stuff like that where we try and clean up the school and, and make it the wonderful place it is. Okay, I'm gonna walk around the middle school. The middle school is a, uh, a square shape, so it's quite difficult to get lost in the sense that as long as you keep walking around, you'll find eventually where you need to be. This is the maths area, so all these classrooms here are maths. I'm gonna stop here a minute. You see there's lots and lots of lockers around. Uh, because this is middle school, the chances are these lockers will be for years 9, 10 and 11 children uh, and your lockers will be most likely near to your form rooms which most of you will have in the lower school building. Uh, so yeah, as I say, these are all mass At the moment what we do have uh, is a lot of chairs and tables obviously outside. Now I appreciate many of you hopefully have had an opportunity to watch our subject tutorials and you've probably seen some of these areas. So, these might be familiar to you. Now this one room here on the end here is actually a history room. Um, so we're now entering history, we're going back in time, quite literally. Not, not literally actually, that was complete rubbish. Anyway, we'll keep walking, try and keep the camera as still as possible. Now, there are some lessons going on because I can hear some people talking. We'll try not to interrupt too many. So this is the history area. Obviously very important when you come to a new place that you know where toilets are. So we've just passed a girl's toilet in middle school. We're just gonna now pass a boy's toilet. So there you go, very exciting. Um, and so that is really, that is history done. Uh, Mr. Wheelie's class is here. Mr. Wheelie was a student here, just like me, a long time ago. Um, probably not as long as me, unfortunately. I'm getting a bit old now. Um, but this is his classroom. Uh, as you can see, the tables and chairs are set out slightly differently. Um, but he is also a year seven tutor next year. So it might be that some of you watching this actually have Mr. Wheelie as your tutor. Um, and the great thing about that is that he knows everything there is to know about the house. So he'll be able to give you a nice tour around the Hinchinbrook house, which is great. Now this corridor is most important if you have any issues with IT. 
So this, uh, this door here uh, kind of solves a lot of your problems um, in that if you have any issues with passwords or anything like that, just come here, knock on the door and somebody will be here and hopefully be able to help you out. They usually, 99 times out of 100, they can sort out your problem very, very quickly. So that's what this is the most important part of this corridor. Just carry on walking through. Again, more lockers on the right there. Just coming to another corner of the square. Uh, and this is the library, so or the learning resource centre, because uh, it's not just full of books, it's also got computers and all sorts of other resources in there. So that is uh, where you would go. You get to go there at least once a week in English, so you will get a chance to go in there anyway. It's also open before school if you need to finish some homework, or if you just want a quiet space at lunchtime, it's also open there. Uh, equally, you can also buy stationary items there. So if there's something like a pencil or a pen or a ruler or something that you need, you can buy one of those there. Let's scan around here. We won't go out of that door yet because we need to still finish off middle school. And here we've got, these are RPEs. If I just scan up a minute. Again, you may well see some of these things in uh, subject tutorials, uh, but this is RPE. And these are RPE classrooms. So have a look there. And if we just make our way through down this corridor. And if we just keep going through here. And now we've come back to maths. So now we're back in maths, as you see, another toilet area, very important. You know where the toilets are. I know I'm sort of joking about that, but it actually is. It is in middle school because you won't spend, well, you will spend some time here, but you won't have your form room here for week. So hopefully you can now orientate yourself. You can work out where you have come from, where we've been, because just on the left up here is where we entered. So there you go. There's the house through there. There's well green. Just to prove it. There's the well. Turn around here. Over here, we've got the quiet garden. It's a lovely place, it is very quiet. Um, it's really reserved for um, sort of middle school students uh, and generally those that are gonna keep it quiet. Um, it might get, again, you might have a chance to visit and certainly it won't be too long before your middle school. Scary, goes so fast. All right, so we will repeat this little bit of our tour because it makes it easier for us to then go out uh, the next door and have a look at somewhere else. I'm gonna look at geography is where I'm based most of the day because that's what I teach. Right, so down these stairs da, 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 and out this door. Even though it says no exit, which uh, I'm just going to make our tour a little bit easier. So those are the bike sheds that I mentioned. If you're coming from Brampton or Buckton or Offord, if you're feeling adventurous, then that would be where you park your bikes. One thing about parking your bikes is please take care obviously of your bike, but equally please take care of other people's bikes when you're putting yours away. All right, because there's worst, you know, you don't want your bike getting damaged and you don't want to damage anyone else's bike by accident. So uh, that's something that we would like you to think about. Equally, obviously bike safety when you're actually riding your bike is extremely important to us. We spend a lot of our time talking to students and advising them on how to behave sensibly. And I know I'm sure all of you, or a lot of you have done bikeability and will know all of that. So we're just walking down to this building. This building is called the Peeps Building, actually, um, although it's mostly known as geography because it's where geography is. Um, and so the name of the building officially is the Peeps Building. Let's so move down here. This is where, as I said, I'm normally based. If during the day you need me particularly, then you can come here. Uh, if you need your tutor, they could be all over the place because they'll teach lots of different subjects. This is my classroom, so you will probably, you may well have uh, your PSHCE lessons in here because I teach the majority of Year Seven PSHCE. So you will probably see this room quite a lot. But if you need to know where I am, this is probably where I am. Uh, and then that's a corridor of geography classrooms. All right. Again, we do fortunately have some toilets here. So again, knowing where the toilets are extremely important. All right.
So in front of us, we've got the um, sports hall. And sports hall is probably the newest part of the school. I think it was built two or three years ago. Um, and we will take a little trip down there, but I just wanted to give you sort of the outside view. And then just on the side of geography, you get quite a nice view of the field uh, and of the Astro at the bottom there. And most lunch times, certainly when the weather's fine, there'll be a member of staff based on the AstroTurf and people can go and play football down there. But you do need to make sure that you wear trainers. They won't let you on if you just got your school shoes. So just be aware of that. And that's one other reason that you might want to get a locker because otherwise you would have to carry your trains around with you all day, which is uh, something that most people don't really want to do. So, in front of us you can also see a playground. This is normally for years 9, 10 or 11, so middle school students, um, because it's just not near to the lower school. So, generally at breaks and lunches, most of the school is open to everyone, but a lot of the time the year sevens and eights will generally flock towards the lower school building just because that's familiar to them. Um, and there is actually a playground that is only for year sevens and eights, as well as a grassy area that's only for year sevens and eights as well. So walking down here, so on the left hand side here, this is music. Uh, this building I think is an octagon shape. Um, and you'll see it's music when because they've got a fancy sign outside their building, which is very nice. Just turn and show you that. So it's, it's, a it's a symbol. There you go, symbols. Have a look at that. Now, you may not have even tried musical instruments before. You may do lots of musical instruments, but I would advise that you do try and take part in as many clubs as possible. And there are loads of great music ones. Um, and they, yeah, they probably offer as many clubs almost as we do sports clubs. So try and get involved. Particularly at lunchtime, you have quite a lot of clubs, but they've also got a community choir and all sorts of things. In front of us, we've also got music. So there's music on the ground floor there. But the reason I wanted to just pan over here is you can just make out the pink roof of our food court. So we'll have a visit to the food court in a little, a little bit. But it's uh, it marks kind of the centre of the whole school site, so it is quite a useful sort of landmark if you like. Can't really miss it. It's bright pink, um, and mo many students love the food at Hinchinbrook, and so it might well be that you end up going in there. Um, but we'll cover that in a little bit more detail in a bit. Let's walk down to the sports hall. There aren't many places that are out of bounds at Hinch and Brook, but one place that's out of bounds is on our right as we walk down here, and it's called the Japanese Garden. So I'll just take you a little bit further so you can see it. There's lots of wildlife and things down there, which is quite exciting. It's a big rabbit down there, as you can see. It doesn't look that big on the video, but I can tell you it's quite big. Um, but there is a pond here, so for obvious reasons, um, we don't allow students into there unless they're accompanied by a member of staff. We do go down there for subjects like science and geography and things like that, because obviously we study, um, you know, we, we study nature, we study the geography of this area and the climate and things. Um, but you can't go down there unless you're accompanied because obviously it's potentially unsafe. Okay, let's scan around, just see if we can get into the sports hall. So we can have a look in here. Now, some of you might have been here before. I can see me in the uh, mirrored glass there. Very exciting. Let's see. So that's the sports hall. It's pretty impressive. I think one of the most impressive things about the sports hall, well, there's two really impressive things about the sports hall. One, I can make my echo, my voice echo. Hello! Amazing. Uh, another thing is we've got one of those fancy scoreboards that you might have seen in sort of American films and stuff. Uh, sort of takes me back to, let me see and think. I'm going to go with um, not Back to the Future. Oh, I can't remember. It'll come to me. It'll come to me. Let's go around here. It's a basketball film. Your parents, ask your parents, they'll know. Team Wolf, there you go. It's a bit like Team Wolf. And if we go up here. So that is an automatic, that automatically comes down. It's a basketball net. So it comes down and then it goes onto that. Cool. 
right, okay. We'll now leave before I get told off. Okay. Just another little quick look. Right. Now we are also fortunate in uh, to have had quite a lot of famous sports people. Uh, I'm not one of them, um, unfortunately, but we have had Darren Bent. There's a picture of him there. Uh, and we've got like the wall of fame, if you like. So we've got lots of jerseys of various different sports people that have come to our school. Probably the most decorated, there's a Darren Bent shirt there. Probably one of the most decorated sports people who hadn't actually tried the sport that she is now famous for is Hannah McLeod. And Hannah McLeod hadn't tried hockey, I don't think, very much, if at all, before she attended Hinchinbrook. Uh, and now she's got a gold medal. So uh, there you go. So it is worth trying things that you haven't tried before. Make a little journey through here. And then you can see the rules on what you can and can't wear in here. So you want to try and keep it nice. Uh, and then we can see all of our sort of fitness equipment, things like that. And this is open actually to students uh, before school. Um, and obviously during P lessons, you can come in here uh, and take advantage of that. So um, yeah, we are very, very lucky. So let's move our way through here. So yeah, I feel kind of special walking through this area and hopefully we're going to get some of you playing to lots of different sports and I know that there can be many talented people. We usually get quite a few talented sports people come up every year. So uh, yeah, we do very well in the uh, inter-school sports competition. So I'm going to try and keep that up. Now, I just want to show you this really quickly. Just down here, apart from uh, sort of the edge of the sports hall really, the most important thing, that was a, a, a woodpecker that you just saw. So if you're really observant, you'll see a woodpecker just fly through the shot, so that's quite exciting. Um, but I just want to show you here, because this is the pavilion, and usually I think the boys uh, get changed in the pavilion, don't think the girls, I think the girls tend to get changed in the sports hall itself. Uh, but if you ever get told to go to the pavilion, this is where you will be asked to go. Um, and you can kind of get your bearings a little bit by looking over there, you can just see the Astro in the background. The other thing I wanted just to take a brief moment to talk about is the country parks. So again, we are fairly fortunate in that we have such a resource on our doorstep. And although you won't get to go there every day or anything like that, um, in geography, we certainly set, take our students down there quite a lot, uh, and in science, and they do go down there in PE sometimes as well. So you can see those trees, that marks the sort of boundary of our school. There is a fence all the way around there. Um, but we also have a key, where it lets us out of that, the gate. There's a gate down there. And we do get a chance to explore and look at uh, nature, and, and obviously there's lakes there and things like that. So if you've ever visited Hinchman Country Park, then this is how it relates to where our school is. So you can kind of see it runs along the back of our fields. Uh, and again, we are very lucky we are able to go down there. You can't go down there obviously during the day or by yourself. So that is would be out of bounds. Um, so I said, as I said, there's, there's not many out of bounds areas within the actual school site, but that marks the boundary of the school site. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't be going down there on your own. Now what you possibly, and I was going to speed up the, uh, the walking part of this video, but I didn't want to just because I want to give you a sense of how long it takes to get from one place to another. So if you're watching this um, and you're watching it in real time, then you will get a sense of how sort of far apart some of these buildings are. And that's probably one of the biggest changes from your experience in primary school, where typically you'll be in one room most of the day um, it is worth possibly investing in a Fitbit because your steps will be phenomenally higher than what they are at the moment, uh, particularly if you then do a club after school um, because you'll be walking, I don't know how many thousand steps just to go through your lessons. Okay, so we'll come back to the food court, but in front of us now is the swimming pool. So some of you might have been members of Slash Academy. So this is the swimming pool. Um, you will have swimming it's part of your p lessons for i think probably about eight weeks i think that's an eight week rotation uh, where you do different sports for eight weeks um obviously you really want to have swimming 
kind of this time of year in uh, June and July because obviously that's when it's warmest outside but uh, yeah you will get a chance to experience that now the reason for bringing you to this playground this playground anyone can go to so this but, but usually it is kind of occupied by quite a lot of lower school children because it's near to lower school this building in front of us is lower school and if i move a little bit closer you'll see there's these little white blocks on the wall they are they have all got initials of our PE staff because when you line up for PE you don't go to the actual changing room or, or a particular classroom mainly because it's not taught in a classroom uh, but you line up here and then your teacher comes to get you and takes you to whichever changing room they want you to get changed in so uh, that's just an idea of where you should go most lessons most subjects you will just head towards the room uh, and line up quietly outside it until the teacher comes okay so if we just pan round or the lower school. Lower school, as opposed to being a block, uh, a square like middle school, lower school is a cross. So we'll just go through these doors. On the playground down there with some football uh, and basketball nets and things. We can stay into here. Alright, so as I said, this is primarily occupied by English, got lots of lockers, and seven out of the ten year seven. Uh, forms are going to be based in the lower school building so chances are you will have your form here and you will have a locker here so these are all English classrooms you get an idea so as I said it's a cross so this is one sort of um, line of the cross if we just rotate round see the English base hello and then we're going to walk up here following the arrows let's walk up this corridor this an annoying beeping sound which Hopefully we'll go away. Oh, more toilets. So there's the girls' toilets there. There's the boys' toilets here. And then, strangely enough, there's actually more toilets really close. So there's another boys' toilet there. And there's a girls' toilet there. So lots and lots of options uh, for toilets, which is always important. We also have a water fountain there. Um, now, we're in the centre of the cross now. So most of these classrooms are English. If we go down, look down this corridor quickly, uh, these are language classrooms, so it's where you'll have your Spanish or French lessons down that corridor. But as I say, most of these are English. I just want to take you just towards the, the right here. This is our base camp area and more toilets. Um, and base camp is where students who have additional needs will probably come and get some extra help. Um, and it's also a really nice place to hang out. And we've got this place here, which is called The Haven, which is an amazing room where some students will actually get to spend some of their free time. We've got computers there, we've got a pool table, we've got some comfy chairs, it's amazing. So yeah, some of you will probably spend quite a lot of your time down here. It's a very nice place. So if we go through these doors, the great thing about base camp also is it leads nicely into the year seven and eight play area. So this area is purely for year sevens and eights. Um, no one else is allowed here. Um, so if you want a bit of peace and quiet and maybe you don't want to be with the older children, um, this is a place for you. The other thing about this area is also it leads around, it's kind of like a wild garden type area here. And then it leads around to the left here and there's a playground, a, a tarmac playground. Um, and this tarmac playground, again, is purely for year sevens and eights. So whether you want to have a kick around of a football or something like that, this is your playground to do that in so you can have a look at that. All right, so that's the lower school playground and the lower school's kind of grassy area. Take another trip back inside so I can complete the journey on lower school because there's one very, very important building, apart from medical room, that's really important that you try and remember where the medical room is. Probably the second most, if not equally important, is the, uh, the lower school office. So the lower school office is where Mrs. Pittock is based. Mrs. Pittock is our student support officer for year seven and transition. And she will be usually available during the day because she's not a teacher. Um, so she's more free than I am to be able to help you and your tutors. So your tutors would be the first person you try and ask for help if you need any. But if they're in their lessons, they can't really help you. So you would obviously need someone else. And so you would come down to lower school and you would head in towards the lower school office. That's right here. So, we can't go in at the moment. I think it's locked. Uh, but that's Mrs. Pittock. And that's what she does.
Okay. And the other person that's based in here, apart from the, the year eight student sport officer, which won't be the lady that you can see in the picture there, uh, will actually be a lady called Mrs. Erskine. But the other lady that will be in here, that is relevant to you is Mrs. Derbyshire. And all the letters and things that your parents have been getting about transition and about uh, your form group and all that sort of stuff have come from this lady, okay? So Mrs. Derbyshire is also based in this office. So one of those two people, along with Miss Erskine, will be more than happy to help you during the day if you have any problems. Uh, but we don't just like to hear about problems, we also like to hear about nice, happy things as well. So please do feel free to come and share some great stories with us. So these are all English classrooms and again more lockers. We'll see at the moment we've got lots of chairs and tables. I'm sure some of you have seen these in the, uh, the videos that you've already seen but I uh, just wanted to give you a, a sense of an overall view of the, the school. We're just going to finish this little section of the tour by going up towards the PAC, Performing Arts Centre. Performing Arts Centre is Primarily in terms of lessons, it's based, ba a base for drama. Uh, they do have some music things going on in here as well. Uh, but the reason, most important reason, I suppose, that you would probably be in here is for assemblies. So we have assemblies, or we will hopefully have assemblies once a week. And our assembly will be on a Monday. And what we do is we line up in each of our form groups in kind of a fan shape. So if you have a look here on the floor, you can see the edge there, I'll try and do this really slowly. It kind of goes in an arc shape and each of your form groups, in theory, will line up according to your house colour. So there is a brick there, I promise, two bricks that are green for Cromwell. And so C1 will line up in a line just down here and C2 and etc. etc. going all the way around the fan. And then when you're all nice and quiet, then we let you come in, usually one form at a time. Come in. And then this is the PAC. Now, if you choose not to buy food, and we will still visit the food court, I haven't forgotten. Um, but if you choose to um, probably being pat lunch, something like that, you don't have to go to the food court. You can just come here and eat your lunch here. A lot of year sevens and eights particularly eat their lunch in this area, primarily because they are lots and lots of chairs and tables. Um, and it's just a nice area, um, a nice and spaced out. And yeah, it's just a good place to sit. Uh, again, more toilets. Yeah, important. And then, I don't know if there'll be anyone in the actual auditorium. This is the PAC. So if you are feeling at all uh, theatrical or musical, or you want to take part behind the scenes with any of our productions, then you will spend an awful lot of your time here. But even if you don't, this is where we have our assemblies. You'll all have assigned seats. Um, we usually have the seats all the way out to um, probably about here. So yeah, and this is where you'll come on a Monday every week and We'll have guest speakers and, and all sorts of things. So it's normally quite a fun kind of session that you'll have here. So this is the PAC. Move our way out of here. Make sure I turn the lights off. Okay, before it's a bit dark. Oh, phew, made it. Okay, let's make our way out of here. And that is most of the buildings. Now we'll just head, oh it's just started to spit with rain. Let's hope it doesn't keep raining. That would not be good. Let's make our way under this. This is quite a nice tree. Lots of people sort of sit under there. Quite tricky to have a conversation either side of that tree. I'll let you work out why. Uh, yeah, but anyway, quite a nice little seated area there. And uh, year sevens, oh this is the other bit that you can't go in, sorry. Um, I know it's a grassy bit and people like to think that you can just sit on any grass. This is a very important bit of grass. Uh, in front of you, she's got the foundation stones of the original grammar school. Uh, the school's been here a long time and we just don't really want any students going on this little area of grass. Um, the other areas are out of bounds, if you like, are very, very obvious. Um, there are any boundaries anywhere that, that teachers couldn't see you. So any sort of tree covered areas, not really allowed in there. 
Uh, these trees are okay. You can you can hang around near those trees there um, because they're not. You can't really necessarily hide or hurt yourself too much. Um, but any other sorts of trees that where there's a large number of them, then we we don't let you hang around in those. Uh, if you want to eat outside, but you don't, but you need to be covered, like now really, because it's starting to spit with rain, this would be a good place to go. You can see the swimming pool behind it. So this is the canopy. So if anyone talks about the canopy, this is what they're referring to. We make our way through here. One place we haven't covered yet is DT and art and creative areas like that. So we will go see that. So as I said, as I promised, we're going to look at the food court briefly. So this is the food court. When you're lining up you will line up near that fence in front of you um, at a lunchtime we do a rotation system where one week the year sevens and eights will have the first sort of sitting the first 15 minutes is just for them um, to come and line up so it's generally a good idea to get here as quickly as possible on those weeks and on the other weeks the nines tens and elevens will have first sitting so you might as well chill out for a bit and come here after that sorry there's a bit of a bit of a, a noise going on let's go in here all right, so this is the food court. You can see it really well. And you see lots and lots of places to sit. But normally the people who sit here are the people who buy food from here. You wouldn't come here with your pat lunch because as I said, there is a queue. Um, it's very unlikely that you won't have to, have to line up for a bit. Uh, options here, loads of options, loads of nice food available. Um, I think I talked a little bit about this in the transition video, so I won't go on too long about it, but you can see the three options there. Equally, there's also a fourth option, which is the grab and go, which is the one right at the end behind the sort of white screens. Uh, but you'll enter the food court from a door on the other side of the food court to get grab and go. In theory, it's a bit quicker. So if we move around here, you can kind of see we've got the recycling area. We've got the places to put different things. Um, yeah, and, and there is, it's very important that you leave through the outdoor. So the one that says buy and you go in the indoor. As you can hear, we do have grounds people that are working all the time. Okay, so walking through here, just walk past the food court. Just making our way up. This is the library you can see in front of me. Okay, walk through here. So on the left here, you see the dance studio. Just take a little journey into the dance studio. We might not be able to actually see in the dance studio itself. We might not even be able to get in. Oh, we can, there we go. Okay. So, it's a dark, it's a dance studio, um, and if you've done any sort of dance outside of school, then you would obviously recognise this. Just coming out of the dance studio. Okay, so in front of us, got this like archway, and upstairs in this building, you can find DT, sorry, IT. Uh, food and textiles. So we had to do computers, you can see the sign there. Uh, computers, lots of computer rooms up there, along with uh, a place where you can start learning how to cook if you don't already know, and textiles. If we just scan around here, uh, we can see back to the dance studio. We can also see this is a pottery studio just over here. Uh, don't know whether we'll be able to actually see in very well. We'll have a go. See through this. Nah, it's not really worked very well, has it? Uh, but anyway, you can kind of uh, understand that is a that is definitely a pottery studio. And then we've got the rest of art here. So through here. So these are all our art areas. So our art area, and many of you will hopefully get to see the uh, art ex art exhibitions and things that we have um, out quite a lot of time in the summer term next year. here just to orientate you this is the middle school again and the library is sort of directly through those two those windows there i'll show you that again dt is on the other side of that block that we just looked at in art um, so i'm going to take you all the way to dt because hopefully you get a sense of where we are now and we're now coming back out there is one other place i want to show you which is the third entrance to the school so we came through one, we saw the other one near Well Green, but we need to see the one near the bus bays. So we're just going to take a little trip down to the bus bays. So those people arriving on a bus 
or coming from places like Huntingdon or Bob Manchester, you will probably end up going through the gates at the bus bays to park your bike or to go to school. So, over here, the science block, and then this is the exit. Again, this will all be open after school, so you won't have to wait. You won't have to have a badge or anything like that. If someone talks about the site team bungalow, that's the site team bungalow. So if you need any site team help, those are the gentlemen walking around in uh, blue tops. Uh, they can help with all sorts of cool things. They help around the site, site with all sorts of things. Lots of cars, this is a staff car park. We've got these red dots on the floor. This is all about social distancing when we have a few more children in, uh, probably in September. But just to, again, you will ride your bike, but you will walk it once you get to our site. So see the uh, zebra crossing there? You'll walk your bikes over there and you'll walk your bike down this path. If you're coming from, let's say, usually Gone Manchester people bike from Gone Manchester uh, or Huntingdon. I suppose there might be a few people from Stukeley or somewhere like that. You'll walk your bikes down here. As you can see, some people choose to park their bikes on the outside of the bike sheds. I'm not really sure why. They may actually not be students. They might be uh, just people that park their bike and then walk to somewhere else, like the hospital. Um, I would always advise parking your bike inside the bike sheds for safety reasons. Um, you've got plenty of spaces for them to go. And these are the bus bays. So this is the bus bays in front of us. So you can see your bus will park in usually the same um, area every day and so you'll get used to where you're going to um, where you're going to sort of get catch your bus from school where you're going to get your bus but you'll know the number and the number's very clear on the front of the bus that's normally fine uh, what we don't want is lots of uh, parking of, of, of cars from parents here it's not a good idea it just gets in the way of the buses so we don't ask we ask that you don't ask your parents to drop you off here uh, and obviously these gates will be open in the morning and you will if you don't want to park your bike there then you'll come through these gates and then just over the fence there just a bit over that wall is another set of bike sheds all right so if you're biking from god manchester huntingdon or somewhere like that you will either park your bikes in the first bike sheds i just showed you or in those this is splash academy for those people that have been at splash academy um this is me so uh i hope you've enjoyed the tour I hope you've maybe learned and got a bit more of an idea about our school from that um, and I will see you soon. Bye.